Praise God, another day in his word. We've been in John chapter 2, and if you hadn't watched the, light, the latest uh, soapbox sermon, it was called Jesus Juice, and this one's going to be called Jesus Juice also, but part 2. And we were talking about a wedding that Christ was invited to. It said Mary was there, but Jesus and his disciples was invited to this wedding where he performed his first miracle. Now, Jesus doesn't have to be at the wedding to perform a miracle. Jesus doesn't have to be present for you uh, to be blessed by him. You know what I'm saying? Just because you don't see Jesus don't mean he ain't there. You know, and I might not be able to wrap my mind around a lot of things that are spiritual, but it doesn't mean that God hasn't got his hand on it. You see, God has got my best interest in mind. And that's, that's where my faith comes and rolls in. Not unreasonable faith. Unreasonable faith is superstition. But I'm going to trust God that's there even when I don't see him. Now, you remember Indiana Jones taking a big old step right outside that canyon? That st the step was there. He took a step of faith. It was a little small step. And that's all Christ is asking us to do, just to reach in his word, take a little small step of faith, and just trust and obey, obey and abide in him. And uh, that's exactly what Christ is asking us to do. Before I get off track, we were talking about that where Christ was invited to this wedding in John chapter 2. And it's where he performed his first miracle. Now, he could have performed this miracle down the block just like he, like he uh, blessed that man and healed that man's son from down the road. You know, uh, the official came up to Christ and said, my son is sick. He said, go on, be home, go on home, your son will be healed. Now, we're going to be in Matthew chapter 22 where not only has Christ been invited to a wedding in John chapter 2, but in Matthew 22, Christ is inviting us and he's speaking in parables here. And this is the words in red. And he is speaking to us in parables and asking us, not even asking us, and more, um, uh, repetitively asking us and inviting us to a wedding that he has prepared for us. And he has prepared a sacrifice. And God has prepared, and it says a king has prepared his son, has prepared a wedding for his son. It's like God has prepared a wedding uh, for Jesus. You see, it, it's kind of, it's very symbolic. And we got to read, it's a parable. But we're going to jump in this and expand your mind. And let's just think about this together and, and read his word. And, and it says in Matthew 22, And Jesus answered and spoke to them again by parables. And he said this, it says, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who arranged a marriage for his son. And he sent out servants to call those who were invited to the wedding, and they were not willing to come. So the ones he had invited, the, one he's, the ones that he has called on, were not willing to come. Now, uh, he, has, he has arranged a marriage, and he's invited people, but not, they're not willing to come. Again, he sent out other servants saying, tell those, so he's sending out servants again, tell those who are invited, see that I have prepared. He's telling you to look. You can see that he's prepared a way. My dinner and my oxen and the fatted cattle are killed, saying there's a sacrifice there. That's very symbolic of Jesus Christ. There has been a sacrifice made and everything that has been prepared for you. He said, see, you can see these things. See, I have prepared a dinner. And so he's wanting to sup with us. And all things are ready, saying all things are ready. We don't have to add anything to his word. We don't have to add anything to salvation. It's just Jesus, you see. It's just a, it's just a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice that was made of Jesus Christ. All things are already ready. And the last sentence here in verse 4 says, Come to what? The wedding. This is the wedding of all weddings. This is not just a, just a quick celebration where you're going to run out of wine, you see. He's talking about eating and supping and having a covenant with him. You see, this is a wedding above all weddings. This is a celebration, a commitment, a covenant. He's wanting to rub elbows with us. He's wanting to be married with us and attached at the hip forevermore because he knows what's best for us. He's wanting us to live. He don't want us to die. And I tell you what, if we're going to go to hell, we're going to trip all over Jesus getting there. I see Christ, he said he has prepared a place and he has sent out his service to, to help you and show you the way. See, I have prepared. See that I have, I have the sacrifice ready. Come to the wedding. He's invited us three times right there. Christ is screaming from heaven and even in this parable. But it says, but they made light of it. They turned their nose up to it. So they were invited once, but not twice, but thrice. And they turned their nose up to Christ Jesus. So we can't say no man stands with excuse. So if you think that Christ hasn't knocked on your door, he has, and if he hasn't, he will. And maybe he's doing it right now. Because he, he's not, not just wanting to come to your wedding. You may be wanting him to come and go with you, but Christ is asking you to come go with him. I'm inviting you to this wedding above all weddings. Come to the wedding, he says. But they made light of it, and they went their own ways. You know, that interesting? That's exactly what stands in our way of God, is our own ways, our own desires, being in the flesh. I talked to a guy the other day. He was sitting out here on his porch, and he, 
I could tell that he was a little, he was a little off kilter. I could tell that he was, uh, it was just something about him. Let's just say I could tell because he was, he, he, he was, uh, in active addiction and I could tell the symptoms of that. You see, cause I used to look at that in the mirror. So I, I know what it looks like to be an addict. So I went to talking to him and I didn't hear those key words when he's talking about he was going to trust God. He said, well, I asked him, did he need any help? He said, no, he didn't need any help. See, I was inviting him to help him. I was offering out my hand, but he turned his nose up to me. He said, oh, as long as I have myself, he said, as long as I got me, you know, I'm good. I said, I don't know about you, but me got me in trouble. Me got me drunk. Me got me high. You see, when I go, when I start thinking about me, I don't think about you. You see, when I start thinking about me, I most definitely don't think about Jesus. He's not even real with my thinking. So that man right there that told me that as long as I got me, and I looked at him like that, and he knew, he said, well, well oh yeah, me and God. You see, it, God took second fiddle. God was playing second fiddle. He, he had his priorities mixed up, but that's okay. He's going to come around. I've been praying for him. And I'll tell you what, that seed that we planted in his ear of encouragement, letting him know that help is here if you want it. The invitation is here for you if you want it. You see, the Bible has made things clear for those who want it clear. And we stand with no excuse. And Christ is not only just wanting to go with you places, but he's wanting to do the most important thing. I'm calling your attention to something that's very important. That Christ is inviting you to a wedding, a covenant with him. So that's very symbolic. Something that's very similar to a man and woman being married. Something that's very similar. So, some intimacy there. He's wanting to draw close to you. And it says to draw nigh to the Lord and he'll draw nigh to you. You draw close to Christ, he'll draw close to you. This is a good word here now. You know what I'm saying? We're getting real practical now. We're just going to go back to Scripture and beat the devil at his own game. We're going to get practical. It says that, come to the wedding. But they made light of it and they went their own ways just like we all do sometimes. And one went to his farm, another went to his business. And the rest of the people that went out, all the servants of the kings, the rest of them, they gathered up all those worldly people went and gathered them up. They said they treated them spotfully and they killed them. So, they, so the ones the king sent out, the servants that were sent out, the servants that were sent out by the king, you and I, that were sent out by the king to go and go out in the hedges and uh, go, to go uh, round up some people that were that's invited to this wedding to go tell them about this great grand wedding we're having. They round, they, this is, they killed them. They treated them spotfully and they killed them. I'll tell you what, it's a tough world out there. Especially for those who are trying to carry the truth. When you're trying to carry the truth, that's when you're going to go through your hard times. It's when you're trying to do right. The rest of them seized his servants and they treated them spitefully and they ultimately killed them. And when the king had heard about that, it infuriated him. You see, let me tell you something. Vengeance is of the Lord's. Don't you think they got one over on you? When someone, someone, that's a, when someone that is not of Christ Jesus goes picking on one of his children, the Lord's going to give them back. You ain't got to worry about you doing that. I'm talking about these people right here were killed, but it says the king was furious. The king was furious in the vengeance of the Lord. Don't you remember that? And he sent out his armies, and he destroyed those murderers. He destroyed them, and he burned up their city. Then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready. That's where it gets kind of deep. Now, we're almost there. We're almost there. Just hang, hang tight. Hang tight. It's, then he said to his servants, the wedding is ready, but those who were invited were not worthy. So who is worthy? No one is. But they must have thought they were they were better than that wedding because they, they said they made light of it, turned their nose up to it, and rejected his invitation three times. We don't stand with any excuse. We, we cannot stand with any excuse. Christ is knocking on your heart. He's calling you. He's going to call you before you pass away, I'm telling you. You, you, you'll have to trip all over Jesus getting to hell. Therefore, go into the highways, he says. He said, go into the highways, go into hedges, and, and as many as you can find, invite to the wedding. So he's going to keep on inviting because he wants his house filled up with us, you see. It says, so the servants went out into the highways and the hedges, and they gathered together all whom they found. They was ministering to those who God put into their path, just like when I went on a walk the other day and ministered to that man there. We was inviting him to some help. We knew where the help was, so we was inviting him, and he kind of turned his nose up to it, but that's all right. But we were ministering to those who God put in our path, and we were doing the same thing. It says, oh, right here, it says, 
It says go into the highways and hedges and gather together all who they found. Who they found. So basically, invite everybody who you find, both good and bad. I want you to remember that. Both good and bad. And the waiting hall was filled with guests. Now let me just tell you something. When you go and sup with the Lord, you're not a guest. You are going to be a. You're more than just a member. You're not a guest. You're there to stay. So when you when you come to the waiting, when you come to the Lord, you will not be put to shame. He's got you in His hand. Then. You've been sealed with the Spirit. My, my buddy Tim Wilma said, when the Lord gets you, you are sealed. You ain't no running. When the Lord calls, there ain't no running either. The Lord will be calling you right now. He might be inviting you to this wedding. Everybody's going to be there. It says the good and the bad was there, but I hope you ain't going to be a guest. Listen to here. It says, but when the king came out to see the guests, he saw a man there who did not have a wedding garment. He didn't have a wedding garment on. He was guest. See, guests come and they go. He wasn't ready, you see. He didn't have a wedding garment on. Verse 12. So he said to him, the king said to him, he said, friend, how did you get in here without a wedding garment? And he, and he was speechless. See, all those who had turned their nose up to Jesus Christ in this invitation, he's inviting you to this wedding. All those who turned their nose and made light of Jesus Christ, all those who don't believe, they're going to be at the wedding. They're going to see us up. I mean, I'm telling you, judgment day is coming. That's what's happening here, you see. There's going to be some there that's going to be one with Christ, some that has answered that call, the who that who has been invited and that come. There's going to be some that are guests. And you ain't going to have your wedding garment on. And this man was speechless. He ain't going to have nothing to say then. He ain't going to stand with no excuse. He ain't going to have time to speak. Then the king said to his servants, bind him hand and foot. Take him away and cast him into the outer darkness. And there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And the king says, for many are called, but few are chosen. You know, it says, for many are called, but few are chosen. What does that mean, I wonder? Chosen are those who, who come when they're invited. Those who are worthy are those who come when they're invited. Christ is calling you to a wedding to something that's good. And if he's prepared a place and prepared the meal and everything is ready, we add nothing to it. You don't have to do anything, but just come. As he has invited you and he's invited us and me, he's invited us to come be one with him, to have a covenant, to be married with him as the bride of Christ and him as the bridegroom. Jesus doesn't have to come everywhere he's invited to. We talked about that in the last sermon. You go watch that one. But I'm telling you, when Christ calls you, and he may be calling you now, you need to just go ahead and come on now. You just need to come on down to the Lord and be obedient. Come on to the He's He's prepared a place for you. He has a seat for you. He's saving a seat for you. And you can sit there and not be a guest, but you can be one with Christ as in it's a marriage. More than a celebration. It says, for many are called, but few are chosen. You know, the chosen are those who come when they're invited. He, he has chosen you or he wouldn't invite you. And I, and I feel like he's inviting you. If you're watching this, he's inviting you to draw closer to him, to be encouraged, to be challenged. And then when, uh, to come when you're invited. For he's good. Ministering to those who God put in his path. The chosen are those who come when they're invited. Don't be a guest. Just go ahead and come on when the Lord calls. There ain't no running when he calls. The Lord is good. He's prepared a place for you. and saving a seat for you. He wants to sup with you, not just as a guest, but to keep you for eternal, for eternally in heaven, in glory, in beautiful land. There's a place for you there. All you have to do is come when you're invited. He's inviting you.